Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. What I'm reviewing this morning is not a law book. It's a book about cricket. And it's a personal review, this one, because I saw this book when I was a child. Um, it's a lovely book. It's called Cricket in the Meadow. It's a short history of Amersham Cricket Club from 1856 to 1955. So just basically spanning 100 years. It's been written by Gilbert Quinn and it was published I think as a private publication for the members of the club. Uh, my parents of course were heavily involved with um, Amersham Cricket Club for decades uh, at the end of the Second World War onwards and so they knew most of the people and my father features quite heavily in this book because as I will say earlier he he had some records. Now I gave the title of the book Await the Coming of a New Spring and the beguiling music of bat against ball. And I thought that was a lovely expression which Gilbert had written in, in the book. Now let's just have a look at it. It's a very old book now. You probably can't see too much. If it's green cover, you probably can't really make that out, but it says cricket in the meadow and it's got the little um, symbol of Amersham Cricket Club. The book is falling to pieces. There's my copy there. There's the uh, front page. And then what you have got in, um, to be very careful with this. You've got a lovely picture of the original team going back a long way. That is dated, um, I'm just looking to see, 1873. And then you've got the book itself there. Gilbert was the honorary secretary and knew my parents well. Then you've got the various um, bits. The book is very fragile now. And then there's a lovely introduction, which I have taken some comments from. Uh, from Gilbert and then there's the acknowledgements and then we get into the, the book. There's a lot of statistics in here which I found helpful because I knew nothing, very little. My father died when I was quite young and therefore I didn't really get a chance to talk to him much about this but he features in this with a lot of people that we knew uh, when I was a little boy and my brother of course as well, my twin brother. And right at the end there's a very nice uh, comment which is where I've got the actual title, Await the that's right. After toasting the twin spirits of friendship, this is between Cheshire and Amersham cricket clubs, um, uh, friendship and rivalry after toasting it, which animate the relations between the two clubs. The players, like their forebears of 70 years earlier, all dispersed home to wait the coming of a new spring and the beguiling music of bat against ball. That was the annual, I think it was basically the end of the season um, tie between Amersham and Chesham. A little bit like playing Manchester United and Manchester City but I don't think it's the same at all. Now, what do I say about the book? Because I love the book, and it reminds me of so much of my youth and my um, early life with my brother, uh, before my sister was born, in fact, but when my parents were very active as my father was a cricketer and my mother was a scorer. Now, it's a short book, which was uh, privately published in the 1950s, and my father obtained a copy because he and my mother are mentioned in it, and I think it was basically available to all, all the people who were involved in the club in the 1950s. Our family spent many hours at uh, Amersham Cricket Club, which is based in Shardlows, in case you, you're not aware, aware of where it is. And I remember the old oak tree, which Gilbert refers to in the opening chapter, which he says quite rightly, guards the town end of the wicket. Now, I think it's still there. Um, from my last visit to Shardlows, which is some years ago now, tree I think was still there although the outfield landscape has, uh, landscape has changed quite a bit and there's been an awful lot of change since the time that uh, my brother and I were scorers there and of course we also played cricket with my father there when towards the end of his life when, when we were um, teenagers. Now my, my, my family moved to Amersham before the Second World War though my grandfather um, Gilbert, not, not the same Gilbert, Gilbert John Smith Taylor, he died in 1943 and the family was dispersed by the war and my father who's Brian Taylor who was a um, county cricketer he began his cricket career in the army played with Tom Graveney and amongst others and he played both minor counties cricket as a gentleman cricketer and uh, club cricket uh, and my brother and I joined him in playing in the early 70s uh, and then uh, then things changed. I had not realised, of course, the excellent um, the excellence of uh, Gilbert Quinn's book until after my father died in 1974, and I read it anew. And it then dawned on me um, that Brian still holds the um, best bowling average for the club 
even as I write this review in 2019. Maybe that it's going to change eventually, but he still has the best average for the number of, of wickets and the number of runs off his bowling. He's a fast bowler. Now, as Gilbert says, there are quite a few statistics in the book, but they can make for dull reading and a possibly distorted picture. And he continues writing that scores and averages, truthful in themselves, do not, as every cricketer knows, tell the whole story of games won or lost, or are the player's worth to his side. Very true, as most sports persons today know, often to their own cost. Aside from the stats, Gilbert's aim is to bring to life something of the personalities and characters of those who have upheld the heritage of cricket in Amersham over the past hundred years. And you can understand his love for this sport when he says that cricket is, for me, the greatest of all games. Many, of course, share his view. Not all, but many. Now, Gilbert's final comments, I think, are the best when he says that the cricket has held for me in thrall for more than half the long life of the club, that's up to 1955. And in turn he writes that it has held my affection ever since nearly a score of years ago when I first played cricket in the meadow at Shardlow's. And as I say, in those days there was only the one cricket table and it was a lot smaller. Um, and obviously Amersham was a much smaller place. It's the old town, Amersham old town, um, just just a way mile out from it. And it's very, very rural and very much home counties. So it is 50 years since I played cricket there myself. So 50 years on, a long time ago. But I have the memories of those summer days myself. And I will treasure this little gem of a book always for its special significance to me and to my brother and to my family now gone. As I say, the uh, book was published privately in 1955 and it's a lovely little book. I'll just show you it again. It's not very big, it only runs to about 90 pages. But just opening it in the middle, there's a lot of information. Now, unfortunately, you won't know these people. Um, if you go into the clubhouse, there are uh, pictures on the wall, they certainly were in the past, pictures on the wall of all these famous uh, cricketers and I've got a little album and the Amersham Cricket Club um, website now has a lot of um, archive photographs of, of people from the past. So I just wanted to review this book, it was a special book for me and it's uh, something I will treasure. Thank you very much to Gilbert and to Amersham Cricket Club. Uh, I don't think you can get hold of this anymore, that's why I've done the review now. Thank you to all anyway. Bye-bye.